Hey, what's up guys? Hey, Seuss here, and I'm back with another video, or we're back with another video. Um, new drop, new uh, segment of Rutabagas of the Spirit. And so check it out, guys. I'm back, and we're going to be talking about another chapter from James Cone's God of the Oppressed. We're going to be talking about chapter 7 today, the meaning of liberation. And I don't really have to go too deep into who James Cone is into what this book is because we've already dropped two videos uh, of about this book in particular so make sure to uh, go back uh last week's we kind of talked about who is jesus christ for us today so you don't want to miss out on that one and if you tuned in with us last week then you're like hey what's going on isn't isn't pastor adam and miss cassandra supposed to be here talking about just mercy chapter one well yes but check it out we wanted to be nice and we wanted to give you guys one more week just in case you hadn't got a chance to pick up uh the book just mercy by brian stevenson again our book that we'll be starting together as a community is just mercy by brian stevenson so make sure to check it out um i was walking through target the other day and i saw it there so you know pick it up on amazon they have it at target for sure i saw on the shelves it's a really popular book right now i seen it at barnes and nobles too uh so make sure to go there check it out of course, put your mask on when you're going to go buy it, you know, something light. But today, we'll be talking about God of the oppressed. And like I said, the chapter we'll be talking about today is the meaning of liberation. So if you watched our last video, it's kind of it's going to be kind of similar to the last video we dropped. Um, I'm going to kind of read some quotes that stick out to me. And we're just going to have a discussion. Some things that, you know, I feel like we need to talk about as Christians today. It's, it's pretty relevant Um this book was written like, I don't even know when. Let's go ahead and check when this book was written. Yeah, so originally published in 1975. Like, dude, that must be forever ago. I was born in 1999, so that number just seems so far-fetched. If you are from 1975 or have someone you know from 1975, um, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to say you're old. I'm just trying to say that I'm really young. <laughs> now I'm just playing. But yeah, so, you know, this book was originally published in 1975 and some of the things that james cone I, honestly all the things that james cone talks about is still really relevant to our church today and to our identity as christians today so that's really why um during these periods during these weeks where we're not actually like going in depth into a specific book together as a community i like to really we you know we really like to drop these uh little highlights and, and, and dimes from james cone so something super awesome we're going to be discussing as a community some things that really stick out to us and things like that. Uh, so make sure to go to the comments and, and just leave any questions that you have. Uh, follow along. Maybe I read something that stuck out to you. Go ahead, put it in the comments. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and like and share as well and subscribe to our page as well. So you don't miss out on any other of our sermons or rutabagas of the spirits or our book studies, anything like that. Um, so the first thing that comes to mind is, right, you know, the God of the oppressed, it constantly talks about freedom, justice, liberation. But James Cone really dives into chapter seven and he asks this question, well, what is the meaning of liberation, right? What is liberation? What is the meaning of it? Why is it important for Christians? You know, why is it important for the black struggle that, you know, James Cone is constantly talking about? Why is it important for Jesus Christ, right? <laughs> And the interesting thing about that is that James Cone begins this um, begins this chapter uh, with this little section called Jesus Christ as the ground of human liberation. So what James Cone is trying to say is that if we're going to talk about liberation, then we have to identify liberation with Jesus Christ as a starting point. And, you know, for me, that really sticks out because as a Christian, you know, we tend to always try to base everything around our lives around Jesus Christ to the best of our abilities right and here when we're talking about freedom we have to start with Jesus Christ too and I want to point this out real quick that James Cone you know he doesn't talk too much about freedom from sin right it's not your kind of like it's not really your Paul Tillich uh, Karl Barth type of the uh, theology you know it's not your Martin Luther type of, of, of theology right and 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 the reason why is because James Cone is 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 being real and he's and he's kind of talking about this experience that that people who are oppressed tend to go to and so we're talking about the liberation 
of our marginalized communities, of our oppressed communities, of our hurting communities, of the our hungry communities, right? These are things that James Cone is really talking about. And he says when we talk about this definition of liberation, then we have to start with Jesus Christ. And right off the back, there's this really dope thing that I highlighted that I really want to share with you guys. It says this. It says, there, there is no liberation independent of Jesus' past, present, and future coming. He is the ground of our present freedom to struggle and the source of our hope that the vision disclosed in our historical fight against oppression will be fully realized in God's future. In this sense, liberation is not a human possession, but a divine gift of freedom to those who struggle in faith against the violence and oppression. Liberation is not an object, but the project of freedom, wherein the oppressed realize that their fight for freedom is a divine right of creation yo let me just stop right there because honestly i can spend the next 15 20 minutes just talking about just what we read right here right it says liberation is not a human possession right right this is crazy think about it as humanity as humanity we don't possess liberation the only way we can come to know about liberation, we can even come to terms with the term liberation, is because God gives it to us, a divine gift of freedom. A divine gift of freedom. And check it out. Here, here's, the, here's the punchline. To those who struggle in faith against violence and oppression. Yo, how many of us have struggled with faith against violence and oppression? Right? And here God is saying that, hey... If you're ever doubting, if you ever struggle in faith because of what you see, you know, on social media or because what's happening to you in your house or what's happening to you behind closed doors or, or you know, what's happening to you in your community, you know, uh, uh, you know, what what are friends and family saying about you, um, you know, things like that, uh, you know, this 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 fight against police brutality right? Do people see you differently because of the color of your skin? Do people see you differently because of your sexual orientation? You know, um, you know, are you longing for that freedom? Well, Jesus Christ is the one that brings that liberation, right? Because he knows that, hey, you struggle in your faith against these acts of violence and oppression and these acts of, of hate, to be honest. And what's crazy is that I'm thinking about this now. And this isn't just uh, what society is bestows upon you as a person or bestows upon you as a community right yeah society can bestow acts of, of, of violence of hate of injustice and, and you can struggle in your faith and that's where liberation can come but yo i'm thinking about like yo what what just happened in in lebanon right you know if you've been keeping up with the news there was this huge explosion out of nowhere and people are struggling people have died people are seriously injured and, and you know that's kind of like an incidental act of violence, right? You know, there, there, there was, there was, there's mourning, there's bloodshed. People are still recovering, and yo, real quick, man, we, there's ways we can help. We can donate to them, um, you know. So I, I'm gonna make sure to drop a link in the description on how we can help Lebanon with everything that's going on right now, right? But even then, you can ask yourself, like, yo, like, what's up, God? Like that was so random. Why? Why? You know what I'm saying? Or, 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 or even just COVID as well. You know, it's taking lives by the dozens, by the hundreds, by the thousands every single day. And we could just ask like, yo, what's up with that? Right. But amongst all that, you know, amongst all that uncertainty, God says, hey, I'm going to bestow this gift of freedom, divine liberation to you. So that you can help me in this struggle for freedom. And, and, you know, I'm giving a little bit too much. I'm jumping ahead. But that's just kind of to get the bar rolling in our heads of what this idea of liberation means. And check it out. Something else that was really crazy is that liberation is not an object, but the project of freedom. Wherein the oppressed realize that their fight for freedom is a divine right of creation. I'm going to say that one more time. Wherein the oppressed realize that their fight for freedom is a divine right of creation. What does that mean? This is what Anthony Burns, an ex-slave, meant by saying that God made me a man, not a slave, and gave me the same right to myself that he gave to the man 
stole me to himself. A similar point was made by David Walker when he urged black slaves to remember that freedom is not a gift from white slave masters, but a natural right of divine creation. Should tyrants take it into their heads to emancipate any of you, remember that your freedom is your natural right. You are men as well as they. And instead of returning thanks to them for your freedom, return it to the Holy Ghost, who is your rightful owner. If they do not want to part with your labors and my word for it, that God Almighty will break their strong band. Yo, this is crazy, right? I mean, this is something that, the, you know, James Cone is kind of go taking us back to um, the days of slavery. And, and here we're talking about this idea of liberation, not as something that man can give you, right? Only something that God can give you. Only something that Jesus can give you. Only something that the Holy Spirit can can give you yo it's true a man can take away your freedom but a man can't give you your freedom only god can give you your freedom because it's a divine right it's you were born with this you were given this before you were born and it sucks it really does suck that there's people who think that they can take that away from someone who see people inferior to themselves and say, you know what? You don't deserve to be free, right? Unless I give you that freedom, you don't deserve it. And we see it happening all across the world, even now in 2020. We have churches saying, you don't deserve to worship in this church, right? We have parents telling their kids, you don't deserve to be my kid. Unless you do this or act like this or talk like this. We have church, we write, and this is just present, present. It's coming to my mind right now. We have churches telling women, you don't deserve to preach the gospel of God, right? You don't deserve to stand on the pulpit, Whew. right? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Last time I checked, you know, and, and, hey, don't, hey, don't blow me up on this, but last time I checked, the conference doesn't get freedom. You know what I mean? Last time I checked, you know, you know, talking in Adventist perspective, uh, the, the, you know, the world church doesn't give freedom. God gives freedom. God appoints. God calls. God justifies. God liberates. God frees. These are things that only belong to God. These words, you can't define them with humanity. These words belong only to God because God created them and God created you in that. And nobody could take that away from you. Nobody could take away something that God gave you. you can't t nobody could take away your gifts, your voice, your skills, your talents, your persona, your identity. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise, right? James Cone is talking about, you know, the black identity and talking about slavery. And because James Cone has this conversation, we can extend that conversation to the rest of the world, the rest of our communities that are also marginalized and oppressed. Don't let anybody tell you you're three-fifths of a man. Like those are things that should not be coming out of humanity's mouth, but it is time and time and time again, we're taking away people's freedom, but we're taking away something that's a divine gift from God. So it just doesn't make sense. But let's keep reading and see what else James Cone is talking about, man. I'm already getting kind of fired up, right? James Cone again with this idea of Jesus Christ being the, 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 ground, the ground for liberation, right? The grounding of liberation in God's act in Jesus Christ is the logical consequence of any Christian theology that takes scripture seriously as an important source for the doing of theology. According to scripture, the human freedom to hope for a new heaven and a new earth is grounded in God's freedom. Yo, we can only have hope because we're grounded in God's freedom, right? And just to give a better example of that, James Cone, again, talking about um, the, the black struggle for, for freedom, for justice, right? It says black people can fight for freedom and justice because the one who is their future is also the ground of their struggle for liberation. It does not matter what oppressors say or do or what they try to make us out to be. We know that we have freedom not made with human hands. It is this faith that defines our person and thus enables black people to sing when the world says that they have nothing to sing about, to pray when prayer seems useless to theologians and philosophers, and to preach when the world will not listen. For black people, singing, praying, and preaching are not grounded in any human potentiality, but in the actuality 
of God's freedom to be with the oppressed as disclosed in the cross and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus is their freedom. Yo, Jesus is our freedom. The one they claim will pick you up when you're falling and will come to your rescue when you're in trouble. He is the one who gave our black mothers and fathers in slavery an old time religion that moved their consciousness back to the shores of Africa and thus enabled them to use the resources of their heritage in the struggle for freedom. They could shout and dance to the rhythm of freedom because Jesus is the Lord of all creation who gives the little ones liberating visions in wretched places. That is why black people call him a bomb in, Goli a bomb in Gil Goliath who came to make the wounded whole and to heal the sick in soul. With the static praise, they proclaim, Lord, you've been so good to me. You stayed by my side when the world was against me. You are Rose of my Sharon and the Prince of Peace, and the one who breaks into the people's history, bestowing upon their past, giving them courage to struggle in the present and the will to hope that one day. And that great getting up morning, it will all be over with all over this world. Christ's salvation is liberation. There is no liberation without Christ. Yo, when we ground our liberation in Christ, when we ground our freedom in Christ, it does not matter what the world says about you. It does not matter what the world is doing to you. Because no matter what the world can take away from you physically, the world can never take away your hope that's found in Jesus. And this is something that has kept our African-American brothers and sisters so strong throughout years of injustice, throughout centuries of inhumane, cruel acts of just straight violence and hatred and, 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 and evil because they rooted their liberation in Jesus. The struggle for freedom can continue and hope can continue. And this is a lesson that we can learn and we can apply to us as churches today in 2020. And we can press forward and we can press forward for liberation and for freedom when and only when we ground ourselves in Jesus Christ. And I think that's just so crazy that James Cone in 1975 told us that and still applies today. Yo, and since we're talking about this idea of what we as a church, what this idea of liberation means for us as a church, I want to skip over. I want to jump a couple a couple pages ahead to where James Cohen starts to talk about liberation as freedom in relation to self and the community of the oppressed. What, what, how does liberation relate and, and how does how does liberation uh, how, how is it defined to our oppressed communities? And that's something that I really want to touch on because um, I, as I'm as I was reading, it, it was just so powerful. And it's really here where we're going to find our calling as Christians today. It says this because God's freedom for humanity is the divine liberation of the oppressed from bondage. Human freedom as response to God's gracious liberation is an act for our sisters and brothers who are oppressed. There can be no freedom for God in isolation from the humiliated and abused. There can be no freedom for God unless the hungry are fed and, and the sick are healed and justice is given for the poor. Keep in mind that the purpose of freedom is to create it for others. How can we claim to be liberated or in the process of liberation in the Christian sense if the structure and meaning of liberation are not derived from the oppressed community and the struggles of freedom? No one can be truly liberated until all are liberated. And right, and James Cohen keeps saying the authentic identity of Christians. Here's where we're going to find the authentic identity of Christians with the poor is found in the claim which the Jesus encounter lays upon their own lifestyle, a claim that connects the word Christian with the liberation of the poor. And just super quickly, because I don't want to take any longer. I want to end with these four statements that James Cohen's kind of spread out and I'm going to bring them together. And that's how we'll end uh, today's Ruta Vegas of the Spirit. So it says, election involves service even to the oppressors. The struggle for liberation is a service the people of God render for all, even those who are responsible for the structure of slavery. There is no liberation without transformation. That is, without the struggle for freedom in this world, there is no liberation without the commitment of revolutionary action against injustice, slavery, and oppression. And the last thing I want to touch on to kind of just tie everything that I've read uh, for the past couple of minutes together is that any view of liberation that fails to take seriously a people's freedom in history is not biblical 
and is thus unrelated to the one who has called us into being. Yo, as Christians and as believers, we believe that the Holy Spirit lives in us. We believe that we've been elected and chosen to proclaim the gospel of the good news, right? But the thing about that, but the thing about that is that James Conner is reminding us that hey, yes, you've been elected, but with election comes service. We have to be a community that's service oriented towards the marginalized and the oppressed. I cannot stress that enough. This is literally what I've been saying for these past couple times I've got to speak about God of the oppressed. It's kind of been the same thing over and over. We have to be a community that emphasizes justice for all, right? Any biblical view about Jesus or about any church tradition that does not prioritize the marginalized oppressed, the, those that see that, that see injustice, those that are hungry, those that can't that aren't fed, those that uh, can't see the blind, the mute. If we do not emphasize those people in our community, then I'm sorry, but you cannot call yourself a Christian, right? Because it, James Cone is saying, "Yo, there's no freedom, there's no identity, there's no liberation for God if we don't put these things in place." And what's crazy is that, yo, as hard as it is, being elected, being a Christian, as hard as it is, it means extending that grace and mercy even to the oppressors. Does it mean, though, that we let the oppressors slide? No, not at all. It means that at the end of the day, we say, yo, I still got love for you, but you do have to be held accountable for the things that you've done for oppressing my people, for hurting that person. We have to hold our church leaders accountable for hurting so many people. We have to hold our church leaders accountable for denying uh, somebody to preach just because of their sexuality. We have to hold our, our families and our church leaders responsible for kicking people out just because of their gender. We have to hold uh, the world accountable, America accountable for what it did for 400 years, right? And for what it continues to do. We have to hold everybody who's been, uh, who, who, who has been an oppressor, who has taken their power and hurt people and took people's freedom away responsible. These are just some examples of what that freedom in our identity looks like and I know like you know I, I was kind of reading and kind of just jumping everywhere but really just to summarize the meaning of liberation if you get nothing else out of this video just to summarize the meaning of liberation is that yo liberation is a is a gift that God gave you and with that liberation with that freedom you've you've been called and appointed to spread that freedom to everyone and anyone. To when anytime you see injustice, to proclaim justice. Anytime you see hate, to proclaim love. Anytime you see violence, to proclaim peace. Anytime you, you, you come across death, to proclaim life. These are what you've been called to as a Christian. You know, put, put the politics aside. It's not about left. It's not about right. It's about what's human. It's about what is actually right. And what's right is that Jesus has called you and appointed you to be of service to everyone. To help liberate. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. I know it's a struggle. I know it's hard. You don't think the slaves knew it was hard? But check it out. You know what they did? They rooted themselves in Christ. And Christ helped them. Right? Christ showed them. Christ gave them freedom and is still fighting for their freedom. He's still fighting for our freedom. But we got to help God out. We got to change what we're talking about as a church. We got to change our language. The thing about liberation and freedom is that it's a struggle. And it's a struggle even for God. But he wants us to partake in that struggle. He wants us to be co-laborers. We can't, and I stress, and I and I've stressed this time and time again. We can't sit idly by. We can't be those Christians that run to the hills. 
and just kind of wait. Wait, wait, wait till God comes back. Wait for Jesus coming again. You know, we can't do that. We're not going to get anywhere doing that. But you know how we will get somewhere? Fighting for everyone that's facing injustice right now in our society. We can go about it feeding everyone who's hungry in our society. We can go about it healing the sick in our society. Practical things. Things that we should be doing already. Things that we should be advocating for already. And again, if you're failing to see people's freedom seriously, if you're failing to fight for people's freedom seriously, then the hard and honest and brutal truth is that like, yo, don't fire me, but yo, you, you're, I'm sorry, but you're not a Christian. Because a Christian, a follower of Christ lays it down all on the line. I promise you, it's not about your personal sin. It's, you know, that's, I feel like that's what's been preached about for so long. You know, what do you do when nobody else is looking? I promise you, it's not about that. Human liberation is when people aren't facing injustice anymore. It's when we help further that movement, whatever struggle it is, whatever community is oppressed, whatever person is hurting, is we go there, we pick them up, we say, hey, I see you hurting and I'm going to hurt with you until we can do this together. It's, hey, I have sympathy for you. I have empathy for you and I'm going to help you no matter what. Or it's, hey, I'm struggling. I'm a person of color. I'm this gender. I'm this, I'm that. And my community is struggling and hurting. Journey, can you help me out? Christian community, can you help me out? And we better not turn our back on those people that are asking for our help. And right now, right now, people are asking for our help. Let's root ourselves in Christ and let's fight for human liberation in all areas. This isn't just about the church anymore. This is about humanity. Yo, let me know in the comments. I kind of just went everywhere with today's topic, but it's just because it weighs so heavy on me. It really does weigh heavy on me. I'm tired of seeing people hurting. I'm tired of seeing people die. I'm tired of seeing people face injustice. I'm tired. I really am. And as Christians, we should be tired. And we should want to fight for this. So let me know what you think of this chapter of... of uh, meaning of liberation you know there was so trust me i literally only touched like on a couple of things i just read a couple of things and just kind of just went from there uh because that's what stuck out to me but there's so much more that i didn't cover so if you want to read more again this is god of the oppressed by james cone such a good read such a good book uh make sure to follow along take notes highlight whatever you gotta highlight and like i said we'll be back next week uh, with Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. So you had about, now this is your second week. Make sure to go pick it up. Don't lag on it because Pastor Adam and Miss Cassandra are going to lead us through some really amazing conversations. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you. Make, like I said, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, have any questions? Make sure to like, make sure to share this. And uh, yeah, guys, stay safe, wear a mask, and continue to fight for human liberation in all areas in all societies, in all peoples. Stay safe, love y'all, and deuces.